one thirty. I think we can call the session to order. Oh, thank you. We uh, do want to thank Donna Park for her generosity and the, providing the refreshments for today. Thank you very much, Donna. Public session. We uh, no one public session. Okay. Approval of minutes. Somebody want to give me a motion? Barbara? Make a motion to accept the minutes. Second. Jim, structure seconding. Okay, is there any uh, problems with the minutes to the changes you want to make? Difficult? No. Okay, in that case, all those approved? Say aye. 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 All those who disapprove? Thank you, it's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to the finances. Budget review. Linda, you're up. I, I just have to say, we had a good joke the last time where, you know, we, um, I gave you a sample of the budget. That was actually the budget because it was, um, it hadn't been revised and my name wasn't changed on it, so it was still Patty's. So, and when someone said, well, Patty's name is on here, and I went, oh my goodness, I must have given you the wrong budget. But actually, that was, that's, was the budget we were working on, and still are until the end of um, the end of May, June, anyway. Um, so this is a draft budget that was submitted to the mayor, and he's approved it, and he is going to add an additional um, an additional thirty thousand to supplement the cost of our second dam. Okay. So, so we're really in good. We're really in a good place. Anybody have? Questions. Yeah. We paid for that second van. No, if, if this is there, so we'll I, have three. No, I'm sorry. If, if the thirty thousand will be, um, I actually gave him a budget for the van maintenance, for a, a van driver, and for the gas that um, use is used presently um, for Belchertown, and that's the number. That's the amount of money it costs to keep the van going and up and going. Um, but we have, we actually have a surprise for you um, regarding the van. It's here, it's, it, we have it, we have the keys in hand, and uh, Michelle's been doing a great job along with Jen to keeping it up and going. And um, following the meeting, we'd like to take you out and show you our surprise. Um, and there's a few other things that we'll, we'll update you regarding the van. But that, that was a good question, Barbara, but it has to do with the fact that, um, you know, we, they, we do need a budget to keep the second van up and going. So we thank the mayor. Okay, any additional questions on the budget? Okay, well, we move on to uh, staff report. Michelle? Hello, I'm You're Michelle up. Dillon, the social worker, and I also supervise the transportation program. Um, we'll also start with the transportation program really quickly. I just wanted to share that um, today we have 12 rides, and that's been the most we've had in our van so far. Um, so I'm happy with that. So it's a, it's a pretty much a full day from 8 o'clock until 3. We've been riding, picking up people and dropping them off at different places, just in town. Um, it's going well. We have three great drivers, which I think most of you have met. If not, you'll see them around. Um, that's, that's really all I have to say for the van <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> it's just going really well. Um, I am going to talk about the health and safety fair. Um, I wish I brought more of these, but I'll be, um, I just have a few um, information that health and safety fair will be May 11th um, from 10 to 2. Um, it's the 15th year, and um, we've made a few changes. I've made a few changes, and with the help of Victoria and um, other staff. We're changing the color of the posters, and I'm going to pass you around one. Um, it's a little bit different than the red that we normally have, but we're going to um, try this this year. It's a little fresh, mm -hmm. fresh look, so I'll pass that around. And um, so far, we have um, 32 accepted vendors that have applied and have um, paid for a space. And um, I probably have about six or eight more in my box that I'll open up today so that we'll add. 
Um, another change we've made is we um, raised the table fee um, from $35 to $40 a share. Um, I don't think it's ever been raised, or as far as I can remember, it hasn't been raised. Um, no one's complained, so that's good. <laughs> We've already sold five full-page ads because we have a booklet of people that don't know. We have a health and safety fair booklet that we print up, and we, we sell advertisements for um, different companies in it. And we also put um, health information, the senior center information, that sort of thing. So um, I welcome any suggestions or anything. If anyone wants to put in, um, give me an idea, or you know, have something that you think that it's not a huge book, but it's you know a a little. We're not sure. We'll see how much how many pages we have. <laughs> but um, I welcome any ideas. If you want to um, drop anything off for me, that would be that would be wonderful. Um, I'm all, we also changed. Um, I'm offering the night before um, from four to seven for vendors to set up if they want, because um, it's such a large program. We set up the day before. Um, we have, um, Heather, is it the people from the jail, the men from the jail come in? They're gonna come on Wednesday to help move furniture and yeah. then set up all the tables. Yeah. And then they'll come back actually Thursday afternoon to help break down. Afterwards. And that's, that's a tremendous help because there's, we usually have 65 mm -hmm. vendors, so 65 or more tables. <laughs> and all the furniture mm -hmm. in the main room here gets um, put away into the library, into the, in the games room. Um, so we're happy for that. Thank you, Heather. Um, and um, so the night before, sorry, I got off the track. We're going to set up. I'm offering setup for vendors from four to seven. We're already open that night uh, for another program, and I think it may help with some of the chaos in the morning um, with vendors mm -hmm. setting up. So I'm hoping some people will take advantage mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And then on, um, you know, setup times at 7:30 and 9:30. Well, they have to let you know if they're coming, or it doesn't make any difference. I, I said I'd like them to oh. know, but if they just show yeah. up, I'm happy with that too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it would be it would be nice to have if nobody's gonna, you know show up to do it, then I'm not going to stay. There's no sense in me being here to, you know, make sure I'm here to make for them. But um, I'm hoping some people will take yep. advantage. And uh, we also um, have a parking map that we um, re revised a little. It's a great map, but we kind of switched it around a little for us. And this year we're having, I'm um, having the vendors park at World War II Club. And we're hoping that we're going to fit them all in parking one and two, and there's a parking space here. Um, we have some volunteers that are going to come in and do um, like parking attendance, oh, because that's been a big problem in the past where I end up being the parking police. And, <laughs> and um, you know, it's not always the nicest job to do. So um, I'm really stressing to the vendors this year that this is parking. The more parking spaces we leave for um, visitors, the better. Right. So I'm going to have some a parking um, lot attendant over there and someone else out here to help with that. And I think that's that's going to make a big difference. Um, and um, a lot of, you know, previous years, the parking. And parking's hard anyway, maybe with so many people. But um, I'm hoping that will help. So I'll pass this around to someone's interested in looking at it. Um, and so far we have um, total with um, taken in $2,050 towards the fair that are for tables and um, advertisements in our paper, I mean, in our booklet, which the booklet is paid for through the advertisement, so to no cost. It's no cost to the senior center at all. So that, that pays for all the printing and everything. Yes? Is there, this, I just want to compliment you, it sounds wonderful. Okay. And I've been a vendor before, so I, I like hearing everything you've said, and a person. What I wanted to know is um, if there's something that indicates what the advertisements cost. Yes, there's an application. We, we first send out an, um, an invitation with an application that has um, application for just the table and then on another application attached to that for um, advertisement. So a full page advertisement would be $155 for a whole page, 95 
for a front or back page. Sorry, it's yeah. 155, which I already sold both. Good. Yeah. And um, 95 for a full page ad. Um, 55, I think, for another size. I don't have it in front of me. Maybe we can just yeah. get, get yeah, it Yeah, I can get you a copy of that, definitely. Because I was thinking I could share it with people I know. Sure, absolutely. Or we all, any of us. Yeah. And then what are the, I just, I'm taking my own notes, what are the deadlines for vendors and what's the deadline for the ads, please, if you happen to know? Okay, the deadline, um, let me look at a calendar. Um, because, you know, if somebody could say Thank to you. one of us, oh, I want to be a vendor, and then we, we may want to know by when, you know, to tell them by yeah. when they should get in on it. Um, it's May 11th, so the deadline for vendors, we always switch it and we usually extend it. Um, the deadline for vendors is, we'll say, like, the 18th, but then if we still have time, then we, we put more, you know, April 18th. extend it. And then for the ad book? Is and there a that deadline? would be two weeks before, so it would be about the same. It's about the same date, and I I'll get you the the um, right those, date. I, I'm just guessing on the eight. Yeah, it's around the Thank 18th. you. I, thank you. But Sounds I will. Great. I don't have that in front of me. But yeah. I, I can oh, give you that for sure. information. And usually, if um, somebody comes in and wants a table and we have space, we're right. not going to turn them away. Right. Yeah. It's mainly for the deadline for the booklet mm. okay. because that's got to go out to print. That's right. Victoria is doing a great job, um, as you'll see on the poster, and um, it's beautiful. She'll she'll be helping me put it. She'll be putting it together on the computer. I'll be giving her the information, and other people's will do that too. But it will go out to a printer to be printed. I noticed on the parking schedule the Gazette's not there this year. Yeah, oh, I just I just said that to Heather. The Gazette is not there. But could you maybe put, put is there them down as an option for people for parking? Check in with them and. Yeah, I can check with them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that yep. way it's also an extra, and they only have to cross the street. So that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I will definitely check with them. I, can I also thank um, John and Barbara again mm -hmm. for offering their help with oh, yes, the food? Oh yes, yeah. I haven't got very. <laughs> and I want to especially acknowledge Michelle since we're all here mm -hmm. and she's here. Um, for the last a couple of this week has been um, incredibly stressful. Um, you know, Jen has been out. There's been a death in her family, and Michelle. And this is a critical time with transportation, and she took it on her shoulders, and along with uh, juggling the the real um, stress that goes along with the health and safety fair. So I, you know, we hope that these don't happen again. This type of <laughs> Uh, weeks, but you've been uh, an incredible resource. Thank you so much, and all the staff really appreciate you. you. And you. Any other questions for Michelle? Okay, and again, thank Michelle, and we'll move on to old business. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask you to give a quick overview on that one. Seems like so long ago. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day dinner was excellent. We had obviously John and Barbara in the kitchen again. Um, I think this is maybe the first time I've done an event here where there wasn't a single complaint. Oh, wow. Which oh, was pretty wow. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, had, I, had yeah. several, I had several complaints and it was, the food was too much. Oh. <laughs> 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 but we found very few places turned them that had anything left over on them, so obviously it wasn't too much by the time you could eat. <laughs> but that was the only thing I heard. So I think it went very smoothly and very successfully. I think the evening time worked out really well. Um, so I think next year we're going to do the evening again. Good. I think it worked really well. I would say from, from the kitchen viewpoint, it, it was much better being in the evening. Um, we prepped. Thursday and Friday, mm -hmm. we came in Saturday, but not having it at noon time gave us plenty of time mm -hmm. for the evening time. It was much, much, much easier. And my, my kitchen crew work, fab, I, I, that they're the ones that put this together. They're really, really good at what they do. So it came out good, and with the extra time, I, way better in the evening. I agree. So maybe this is a good time to pass this out. Um, Victoria and I sat down and made a grid for the whole entire next year of the special events. 
Um, obviously, things are subject to change based on things that may happen here. Um, when we plan for beef and cabbage, we try to take into account what the churches are doing and mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Association and all those things, but mm -hmm. this is sort of a proposed mm -hmm. schedule um, for the coming year. Any questions uh, on the same time? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Question about this. Is Linda Barney going to be serving at the bar? No, we were Probably. actually doing a bar presentation for oh. older Americans. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting excited. We're still working on that one. Still working on that one. Yeah. 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 Are you, are you going to put that on Google Docs as a read only for people? Um, we can talk about that. We were going to offer, I was going to talk about this later, but we were going to invite anyone who's interested um, to let Victoria and I know that you'd like to share within the Google Calendar. Mm -hmm. So we finally sort of joined Modern mm -hmm. Times and put all the programming calendars and special events calendars online onto Google Calendar. So we're happy to let you guys have access to that view only. We don't want too many people in there making changes to calendars, but um, it works best if you're using a Gmail address. Yep. Uh, so if you're interested in that, let either Victoria or I know, and we'll send you an invite and accept the invite to view the calendars. So that way, if you're out in the community and you want to show people just how busy we really are and all the cool things that happen here, can do it right on your phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I'll forget what you know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, we also will set up a date for people who are interested. We'll do a little workshop on how to actually use Google Calendar. Oh, that's great. Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah, there's one here. Um, okay, move on to staff vacancies. Okay, we've, we've filled every one of the vacancies and we've hired people and we've moved them up and we've moved them around um, except for one half staff person and um, there was a lot of uh, like uh, there was uh, some new thoughts and new programming directions and you know I wasn't quite sure where what we wanted to to do with this part-time staff person but with the, it was the the staff really feel that we our half-time person support person in the afternoon is Kind of critical to our activities and programming, so I've stopped procrastinating, and um, we'll we'll start um, doing that process, and we'll have a uh, hopefully in maybe two or three weeks' time, we'll have a complete uh, a complete staff, and we've been waiting for it for a long time. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, any questions on that vacancy? Age-friendly cities. I think we have a representative here. Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I introduce yeah. Cindy? Okay, everybody, this is Cindy Langley, for those that don't know her. Um, before Irene Lampson was the director of this Council on Aging, Cindy Langley was the director. And nobody can remember who was before Cindy Langley. <laughs> None of us can remember. But it's been, um, it's been a while. Um, but Cindy left us, um, of left Northampton, um, how many years ago? 1994. But who knows, who's counting? 1994 <laughs> to get a, a, a really wonderful job at AARP in Washington. And she's still working there um, in Washington, but she's working virtually through her home. How wonderful is that? Yeah. Anyway, um, um, and she has, I'm not going to go on and elaborate too much, but we are really lucky, because there's this whole new initiative which Cindy is going to give an overview about, um, and it's called Age Friendly Cities. And it's, um, it, I worked um, in this, with this initiative in Dublin. Um, so it's very, very exciting to bring it back to my hometown mm -hmm. with the support of Cindy. And uh, she has offered to take a lead role in this, that she'll give us more. Um, and Deborah has also asked to be involved in the process. And um, so I would like her to be the representative 
from our board to in the process. And mm -hmm. Cindy, it's all yours, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The last time I was at a council meeting board meeting, it was in the back of Memorial Hall, and oh, it was not nearly yeah. as pretty or nice for those of looking at Kathy who remember the Council Aging Days in Memorial Hall. So um, I'm <laughs> delighted 20 million years later, it seems like, to be here and see the fruition of what in my day was just not even a dream. It was, you know, pre-dream stuff. Um, I'll be brief because I think you might have questions. Um, AARP, I think, that I'm a, does anyone not know what AARP is? I, I don't want to assume. Um, member organization for folks 50 plus, currently 38 million members. Um, an office in every state and the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands. Um, most of ARP's work is done by volunteers. The staff to volunteer ratio is a little bit of staff, big amount of volunteers. Um, in 2012, ARP partnered with the World Health Organization, and they're really the owners, founders of the age-friendly movement. So ARP found and partnered with them to try and bring that age-friendly concept to this country. And the number, I don't know what the current number is, but there are a huge number. I always think that most every state in the country has at least one age-friendly city, if not more. Um, Boston is an age-friendly city. Pittsfield is more recently an age-friendly city, and there may be others that I'm not aware of. There's two, um, West Springfield and uh, Chicopee, I believe. And it's just an and Thank you. I, I didn't look at the list on our website. But it is cities, not towns. Yeah. So the first criteria is have to be a, a city in the definition of what a city means. Um, and the intent, and what I just passed out is a, a really just a very brief overview. Um, but the, the notion is that cities should be friendly and accommodating to anybody, and the focus starts with being an older adult, but then moving backwards. So that it's not this heavy, heavy emphasis on accessibility, and I'm talking well beyond just physical accessibility, um, and sharing too, for everyone's living, because everyone's going to grow older. Um, I'm certainly not as young as I was when I left to go to DC. Um, and it's really also a very much of a grassroots, for want of a better term, volunteer-driven effort. Um, takes the support and coordination of government, you know, folks like yourself, folks like the mayor, um, but it really is, depends upon citizens really doing, wanting to buy in, doing an assessment of the city, and really then mapping out a plan. So what I passed out, this cute little graph, is are there they refer to them as domain so that there are eight do you not have enough i'm sorry no, i underestimated it can maybe you share um and there's another checklist which um linda can make copy so there are eight domains and then there's a checklist that helps you describe so what are the characteristics within each of the domains and so we can make sure deborah for sure um make sure i have your email address so email you more stuff than you want to read um so these are and you, you can see it in two broad categories so it's what you know the infrastructure the built environment outdoor spaces transportation housing things that we normally think of and then um social participation are events open and welcoming to everybody um respect civic participation both i know you guys are interested very much in you know older adults who are going back to work but volunteer opportunities. Um, communication, does everyone know how to get the outward bound calls from the city? Those kinds of things, and do they even exist? Um, I first had a presentation, um, actually I've been back in Northampton three, over three years, it was before I moved, and I think this is when I knew I was moving back, and I thought, so much of what they're talking about is already in place in Northampton, and I think of the hard work that so many people in this, at, around this table and around this table, even as who has pre preceded you. Um, and, you know, I, when I was here 20, 30 years ago, we were working on some of the community access programs and some of the disability accommodation stuff. So, um, moving forward, so the, so the process is fairly simple. Um, the mayor has to commit that he, on behalf of the city, is willing to commit to the principles of the World Health Organization, which are these eight domains. Um, 
that he's willing to establish the Citizens Advisory Group. Um, and that group is then responsible for doing what is simple say a baseline assessment. So if we looked at the eight domains, and I'll probably just pass this around so you can see, so that for it's under outdoor spaces in buildings, public areas are clean and pleasant. Um, so we're doing a, a baseline assessment of all of those areas. And then that's sort of where we are. And then, then the group is looking at, so if we're doing really well in five areas, but three areas need work, then that makes sense that we want to focus based upon the, the citizens group making recommendations that A and B are the most important things for us to work on. Let's make those a priority. And I don't think for a lot of these things we're talking dollars. I mean, there's no money that comes with this in case to anticipate a question. Um, but I know that communities have applied for grants. Linda and I have had that conversation, um, assuming that community development block grant money still continues mm. to exist. It's the kind of thing that's right, particularly for infrastructure. Um, block rent money was used to make City Hall accessible with the elevator a number of years ago, for those of you remember. Um, so that kind of thing, um, Lynn just talked about the ability or the is an ideal intern project for someone from one of the schools to help mm -hmm. staff it and get involved. Because it's really, you know, and personally think this is a multi-generational right. effort. You know, heavy emphasis on those of us who are this side of 60 that other side of 60, but I think we want to, you know, mm -hmm. everyone's growing old, so people want to be invested in and, their community. And people can be disabled at any, any point in their life. Right, and, when, and again, we're not just talking physical, we're not just it's talking physical, disability or ability right. access issues. We're right. talking about if I'm, you're an older adult, you feel like you belong oh, here no. versus walking downtown and the skateboarders are going to get you. Um, I just remember that from <laughs> some before. Um, that and parking issues. Um, as you remember skateboarding when Memorial Hall, we were adjacent to Pulaski Park, and that was one of the issues we always had. Um, so that's a kind of method, and it's really a minimum of a five year. So this is not a flash in the pan, one and done. It's a real commitment to making the city um, friendly for everyone, regardless of how old they are. But again, a special emphasis on older adults. Mm -hmm. So why don't I stop? And Deborah has a question. I can... No, no, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm happy to share what I've done grant writing, so I'm happy to work with the intern and that would be great <laughs> so, um, if you'd like me to do that, so I'll yeah. supervise them. Yeah. I guess at this point, I, I just, I know that was a, a brief overview, but I, I just want to know that if the board is supportive, it's, it is a long process and, um, you know, again, I think a lot of I mean, it's just documenting things that we already have in place, basically, and maybe doing some surveys. But I, I would really like to work closely with some of the colleges on, on doing some needs assessments. And, you know, and, um, Jim had done a needs assessment a number of years ago, and we, we want to kind of maybe reawaken some of that, too. Um, so do, do okay, we just uh, maybe a vote or something that we are committed to making Northampton an age-friendly city? Somebody like to make a motion? I make a motion we make Northampton an age-friendly community. No, you're going to make the motion uh, supporting that. Supporting. Okay. I make a motion <laughs> supporting <laughs> Thank you very much, Jim, for your Thank pleasure. you for your time. Anyone want to second, second. that? Second. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Uh, I All those opposed? No opposed. That's great. I think the other thing that this does, and I mentioned to Linda the other day, um, this is a great way to start connecting all the dots. Mm -hmm. There's lots of stuff, as you maybe think about your music, there's a lot of stuff, terrific stuff going on in our city. It's not all connected. People you know, may know pieces of it, but they don't know the, the wide thing. And I think part of this is. I mean, how, who are all the people from all those dot areas that come together to help work on it? Because I think there are, you know, you guys are experts at knowing what the over 60 crowd is, but, you know, we may not be experts at knowing what the record department is doing, things like that. It's probably it's similar to the problem we have here is getting our message out and what is right. available in the senior right. center. Exactly. And we struggle with that all the time. Yeah. And it's be the same thing. Angel questions. Yeah. You've got to get the word out because if you don't, 
You can have marvelous programs, but nobody right. shows up. There's nothing yeah. to it. And the mayor's aware, right? Had some yes. conversations with him. Yeah, he had a quick email. Um, <laughs> but we have actually discussed it, discussed it, but not that to the point that it was going to happen tomorrow. Right. Well, yeah. and I know that um, Dave Stevens, who lives in town, but heads the State Council on Aging oh, yes. Association, um, a longtime friend of yeah. mine. Mm -hmm. um, has also mentioned it to him. And so I think, and, and actually I think um, Ward 7 Councilor, my councilor, attended a meeting that the folks in New Hampshire sponsored almost two years ago mm -hmm. about age friendly. So ARP periodically mm -hmm. puts on meetings to mm -hmm. sort of convene oh, that's great. people who yeah. are in the age friendly yeah. movement. So, and I've been in touch with the Massachusetts State Office folks who are in Boston, of course. Um, my Western Mice bias has come right. around. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and they're sort of attuned. So the process is really, I don't think anyone who applies to be an age-friendly city is ever told no. So, because it's that kind of voluntary. It's not, it's not a, it's more your commitment that they're concerned about rather than the you know, 20 criteria. So I think that that's, I think it's sort of done. And it's a great opportunity to get um, the word out, to get publicity, to do a lot of that stuff. So I just wanted to, I asked Linda if I could comment. I volunteered to come so I could meet all of you and um, just, you know, I'm excited to work with you and never particularly. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, I think it's all very it's exciting. It's possible once you get this underway, if you can come back again and let oh. us know periodically what's yeah. happening. One of the beauties, and I, I um, ARP is a very, very good organization to work for. And you know, I will have everyone else will no longer have a defined pension, but I'll still have one. Um, and have great health care. But the other thing, um, and this is a good 10 years, we have what are known as community builder hours because ARB is it's founded on service. Mm -hmm. So as an employee, I have 50 hours of paid time a year wow. in which to do community work. Mm -hmm. So this, yeah. this so there's a couple of community building. builder hours because it's. Although it's an ARP sponsored activity, it doesn't really fit with what I actually do with the ARP, so it's a little bit biased. So I'm kind of Thank you. Jim, you have a question? Yes, I do. Reading the list there, um, seems like there's a couple spots for some negatives. What do you see as a negative about this in other areas that have come up, i.e., chamber? Well, I spoke with the chamber. That's why I was yeah. excited. So please, I, if, let me know when you want me to. No, I, I don't, <laughs> whatever. No, yeah. I, probably. I think. Yeah. I think. And I have a former colleague who said there might be some mind melts going on. When you know, I had the conversation, you know, um, is it downtown business association? This is about business activity. It's, mm -hmm. it's about all the pieces of right. the city. I'm not sure, and I may be rose-colored glasses right now. Um, what the downside is, I think. Potential downside is citizens group says we really need X yeah. and X costs a yeah. yeah. million dollars. Yep, yeah. that's what I was looking at. Realistically, you know, we're, we all live in a real world. Yeah. You know, that's not going to happen. So what's what's the end for X? What's the way to you know what what's the way to get there that maybe not a million dollar way? But I think this is a great and this fits into the mission of most of the city's departments. Mm -hmm let alone people like the chamber, mm -hmm. the downtown business group, you know, the, the, hospitals. Like the hospitals, all of the, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't, there are more assisted living facilities in North mm -hmm. Hampton yeah. than, it's like, who are all these people? They're like, opening them every other day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It seems like it. Exactly. And I was like, okay. Um, so I think all, that all of those folks, I think, have a stake in this discussion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that really answers what you asked you. But um, I as I get older, I don't jump in quite as fast as I used to. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're serious. And, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's a rarity for me not to jump in. And I just was reading that and I was like, mm, this looks like a bump, this looks like a bump, this looks like a bump. Yeah. And I you know, just felt that I just don't want to push the ball up the hill. No, and I think one of the, the benefits that we are in 2017, not in 2012, is that we have the ability to benefit from all of the communities who have gone We're before us. Yeah. Um, my, there are colleagues at ARP's national office whose job it is 
to know this area and to provide support to folks like us and through the state offices. So we've got access to a wealth of support and information for people to say, you know, this is what is, you know, most people have been derailed on that. Most people have succeeded on that. Or this is how they worked around. Right, or, yeah, what are the work, workarounds? Yeah. And, yeah. and that's, Problem I mean, Airbnb is a huge yeah. convener role, and that's for that reason, mm -hmm. so that everyone can learn from everyone else. So I don't, it may not prevent it, but it might help figure out how to deal with it. And, and we could have the mayor speak with a couple of the other, if there's another oh, yeah. mayor from Western Mass who's already been implementing this, so they can speak mayor to mayor. Yeah, they and, talk, talk and mayor speak. Mayor speak. Yeah, right. yeah. The, you'll, all be, um, you'll all be part of the development process of it. And if, if you all see a red flag, you know, we, we take down red flags, you know, and we don't address those things, or we do it in another way. So, you know, I, you know this, it seems, having just been back here for a little while, it seems like Northampton deserves to, this status because yeah. it's just an incredible place to live. That's sort of how I felt when I first heard this. It's like, okay, this is... We make it too nice, everybody will come here. I know. Well, let's keep going. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, I, I, don't think I think that's sort of happening now. But I've never seen that interesting, you know, I, you know, when I was, I first started the Council on Aging in the 70s. So at that point, 20% of the city's population was over 60. That's still about the same ratio. So population has, total population hasn't gone up much. It's a little bit lower than it used to be. But we're still holding at that same percentage, which means that you know, folks are moving on, folks are coming in. So it's still, I think, um, I find that, <coughs> excuse me, I find that hard to believe. Yeah. Young people cannot come here to Northampton and buy a home, their first home. Right, they're in East Hampton. We're leaving. Yeah. Now I went, I went online no. earlier today, the census, to, to check, because I, I read this someplace, and I, I thought it might be in that, and this is actually figures from last year. And it's still at about that 20%. Yeah. 20 and what's interesting is that the bigger, the folks coming behind us, it's the age group of folks in their 40s, mid 40s to mid 50s, it seems to be the biggest <laughs> by population group in the city. Well, there's a lot of professionals. There are yeah. professionals moving in. Yeah. Yeah. People coming from Boston, New York, York City. That's the no versus the ham. Yeah. You know, people Someone selling a house in any urban area comes here and is like, oh my gosh, this is a It was a lot less here 20 years ago when we bought our home than it was. We were living in Boston. Oh yeah, and, if, yeah. and, and oh, it, I'm sure it's still is a lot for the same gone, yeah. home. It would have been over a million dollars in Boston, you know, yeah. for the same home that we got out here. So, yeah, I, I think one of the downsides, unfortunately, of being a friendly city is that I, I get a lot of I, I drive people around and we talk about what's changed about Northampton. Everything and the panhandlers are just throwing people right out of yeah. wanting to walk downtown. I mean, I'm a friendly person, and I do not like to walk by people that are begging. I, I want to give them something, and yet I'm starting to numb myself to mm -hmm. these people. Mm -hmm. And it, I think, you know, and I think we're known as a friendly DC, city, right? and yeah. so every corner, I just got a cup of coffee, and I went by four panhandlers. Mm -hmm. That's it's been a problem So it's a real, yeah. you know, it makes being friendly and, and taking advantage Well, we have advantage. a very small, compact Main Street. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you had 15 or street, if you had Springfield, Boston, you've got all these streets and areas. Right. Here we've got one that stretches from the Academy of Music down to the bridge over the uh, right. over Main Street, and that's it. And folks are here because we're and nice. one side of it is right. mostly is is mostly churches, so uh, we fill up a lot of churches and courthouse on one side, so you compact everything. So what you've got is all they just crammed in. Fiber. Being a native, I was born here. It has changed 100%. I have not gone downtown, I mean really downtown, in years. Aww. There's, there's absolutely so nothing yeah. for me to do, nothing for me to buy, certainly, uh -huh. in all these fancy boutiques, which is not for me. Um, panhandling, you got it. Yeah. We had bums, but they were... Um, they were hidden. They were hidden. Um, it's not my town anymore, unfortunately. You newcomers, you know whores, which we 
absolutely <laughs> hate, it's it's not the same. The thing that it, it, it contrasts with it is uh, Florence, mm -hmm. which has right. a nice little compact downtown, and I've never seen a panhandle in Florence. Oh, You're right. we have one. You have one. Okay, yeah, have one. one. Oh, oh Jim Spence. Well, compared to <laughs> down. No, it's not me yet. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So. Okay, if we can move along, folks. Sure, thank you. I've never seen them here. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Bye. Thank you. Nice to you all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, um, one, I just want to what? recognize that we're going to do um, a dementia-friendly initiative, too, along with the age-friendly. And um, Kathy Sotis has offered to take that role for us. And I just read someplace, and I'll get more information, that the store actually done dementia-friendly. And it's all stay in. It's okay. And I got there's a new staff person in the therapy office in Boston. Oh, great. For whom that's a priority. Okay. He comes from, he works at the Oh, I have to see you. 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 Uh, a new initiative that we're, we're trying to work on here, um, having to do with employment after retirement at work. Anyway, um, we had a representative from the Mass Council okay. on Aging talk uh, up to us about um, this new, new initiative, because it's not only new in North Hampton or all, all over Massachusetts, it's, you know, it's a phenomena that's happening all over the country. Um, people need to, um, self a number of people, approximately 40% of the people who are retired need to supplement their income. So she came and gave us a really good overview and it was very helpful and we're on our way to hopefully creating something. I went to depend, uh, to defend our this the grant to the um, community block grants and um, but again there's there's a very really, a really questionable whether um, it's going to be taken out of the federal budget. So we're not sure what's going to happen, but we have a commitment to at least provide support for people um, who are looking for um, employment. So. Any questions on that? Okay. Can we move on to volunteer recognition? Um, so you should have received mm -hmm. invites for volunteer recognition on Monday, April 24th. 11:30 to 1:30. Mm -hmm. It's a buffet-style luncheon, so you don't need to make a menu choice. You should RSVP at the reception desk. Um, if you didn't receive an invitation, it's probably because you didn't log your hours, so you didn't make it onto the list. So if you have any questions about that, please see me afterwards. And it's probably a good time just to remind everybody you should have signed in for this meeting as a volunteer and as a board member. It wasn't on the board. Yes, it yes, is. It is. Yes. Always in the volunteer it's section. In the volunteer it's section. Volunteer volunteer board member. Member. Put volunteer and it says board member. Always. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, I, I, I was I You that. should know that about. People. I thought it was board meeting I was looking for. That should have been on there too. That but that's not, not that my not. Uh, slice of cake. So. Okay, so board member. I, I put the board member in. Yeah, but in the board it. meeting. Yeah. Uh, so. Usually board meeting. Well, the board member goes to the board meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. Anyway. Uh, if you have they know what it is. We have a tutorial. If you have confusion about logging your hours, I'm happy to help you. Remember that. <laughs> you better go to that dementia <laughs> fair. Anything else about the volunteer lunch? Any confusion? Is everybody uh, already logged in? Told yeah. you're coming? Yep. I yep. so. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, move on to. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to talk about the volunteer training. Yeah, it's still on. Yeah, it's still on. Okay. No problem. Uh, Highland Valley Health Services. Well, um, unfortunately, I, I was um, training away, and I, so I couldn't get back in time for the board meeting. Was held at, um, at in Westfield at their Council on Aging, and. Uh, but everything's going fine. They're they're 
Highland Valley is part of Valley Gives Day, so we're sending out and we want people to, to kind of give us part of Valley Gives Day. Yeah. But I, I haven't heard anything other to be otherwise. Mm -hmm. okay. Very good. Thank you. Any questions for anyone? Okay, uh, now let's move on to a new business, the Florence Bank Community Award. Thank you. Well, gee, I wonder who's going to get flowers today. <laughs> Um, you know, I, so I, you all know I'm the new kid on the block here. So, um, I, you know, all I've been hearing about is this wonderful person who's been committed to this initiative for a long time, who makes us win every single day, every single time. How many years have you been doing this, Barbara? Since. The beginning, I guess. Yeah. So I don't know how many years, but anyway, it's a long time. It's um, all I can do is say when they gave us the two thousand five hundred dollars, um, and I said thank you. You know, it wasn't me saying thank you. It was it was because of the incredible oh, wow. work that Barbara has done. Yeah, two thousand five hundred and forty, I think. Well, oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how so did she know? <laughs> this year or this year? Yeah. And Barbara. And, and God help anyone who goes by Barbara's table. Yeah, well, drill sergeant, drill they, drill sergeant. Want, they want to see Every so time she has She's so oh. persistent that they change banks so, so that she can, they can vote for us. Barbara, you know, we, all I can say is how much we appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Thank you again, Barbara, from all of us. Uh, let's move on to the community, community reports. Okay. Mm. Um, so Heather and I are going to do this together um, because Heather's been um, on the right side of me continually um, through our whole new expansion process. Um, so retail, do you want to start and you know, finish up? Sure. Um, so retail, I think we already told you guys that we had visited Belchertown and Chicopee and sort of took some suggestions and suggestions what not to do from both places. Um, right now, Karen is doing a lot. If you went by the gift shop, you've seen that she's done a lot of rearranging, a lot of cleaning out, uh, marking things down so they start moving out of there. So we have some more turnover. There's some new merchandise in there. And I think we're at the point where we're ready to sort of mobilize the shoppers. So we have some people on the committee who are interested in going out, whether it's to tag sales or to places like Christmas tree shops or Target, Walmart, after the holidays when things are marked way down to get more merchandise to put in there. Um, if any of you want to be a shopper, I mean, I'm a tax sale person every Saturday. Um, we're going to have little receipt books so that if you pick something up that, you know, that's a reason, you know, you know what we're looking for. You know, and um, something reasonable that we can mark up to a dollar fifty or something like that. That's how reasonable we're talking about. Um, and we'll give you the receipt book, they, and we will reimburse you. You know. We're, gladly because you're part of our board and um, if, or if you get you know just see something in Can one of the stores house. on the yeah. house yeah. oh clean yeah. out your house yeah. I've been thinking about that Mary do you have anything else to add about the casino I just I accept all donations for the <laughs> really? I don't know yeah. mini sale yeah. I even I maybe shouldn't say that but when I take my trash to the recycling, they have a table there that's always got so I try to that. see what's yeah. up there. And if I think I can use it, I bring it up. Yeah. Next week she'll be dumpster diving. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually uh, And if you do, you please wear a mask so you don't get pregnant. So um, we're we kind of getting away from the big the big items because they just don't sell. And we have um, 
I think we're almost done with our survey, so we'll give you a results of the survey. But people are basically asking for practical. They're asking, they, everybody likes the, the gift shop, but they, they'd like a little bit of a, a slant on it. And Karen's doing outstanding. I think outstanding. that's why the, my table's done so well. Yeah. Exactly. It's yeah. all practical. It's all practical. It's all practical, low cost, and easy, and yeah. things you don't need. Okay, next committee. Um, yeah. um, okay, thank you. Um, we just met with the food committee, and uh, I'm just giving Heather all the committees. You know, it's like you want to talk a little bit about that, and um, and John can also talk. He saw he and Barbara are on the committee also. So the food committee met for the first time this week. So right now it's Barbara and John Kaczynski, Irene Lampson. Linda, Linda, me, and Joni Daniels, who's at the reception right now. Um, so we talked a little bit about sort of the problems with the bistro in the past and how we might work around some of those obstacles. Um, I think the general plan right now is to start slow, um, maybe two times a week, trying to do a light lunch with a focus on keeping it very affordable. Um, and also sort of healthy and fresh, um, something like soups. You can still go to the Blue Bonnet if you want. Well, it's just the healthy part. <laughs> you know, it's I think we have boring. a commitment, yeah. Yeah. especially the for the population Taste we serve, to offer something sort of on the healthy side. Yeah. And one thing you need to avoid from the, and I was a server in the last uh, bistro, Mm -hmm. And the big thing you have to avoid is running out in the middle of your designated time. Mm -hmm. We ran out of the special almost every day halfway through the lunch hour. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and because there was a fear of having stuff left over. Mm -hmm. And it got so bad that it just got tightened up too much. Mm -hmm. And that was one big thing. You will come in and you'd have the Cape Cod chicken, mm -hmm. chicken with cranberry sauce. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would say, oh, well, Cape Cod chicken, oh, right. we ran out of that. Mm -hmm. We ran out of this, we ran out of that. If we were popular, we ran out of it quickly. And that has to be, mm -hmm. you have to be careful about that. Get things that you can carry over to another day. Part of our discussion was that if we're serving on a Tuesday, we could then take leftovers and move them into the coffee shop for a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that we might not be serving out of the bistro every day, but there would be some kind of food Every time we've done that in, the, uh, in the coffee shop, we've served either soup or sandwiches left over from some event. Yeah. We usually sold it all out. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. people like to have a little something in the coffee shop they can eat besides bagels and muffin and So when it is yeah. time for the bistro, will it be every Tuesday this will be the special for Tuesday and every Thursday this we will don't be know the yet. special. We haven't decided that yeah. part yet. Um, we're talking with some other organizations about partnerships and how we can sort of mm -hmm. make it work. So there's still a lot of detail work that needs to be done. We've only had one meeting, so yeah. there's a lot of work to be done. Well, as, as part of this um, committee, is there any changes going to be happening in the coffee shop at all? Did they talk to um, we did talk a little bit. Okay. Um, we talked about what seating, that it might be nice to change the seating around a little in there, um, to have a counter, mm -hmm. counter seating. That Someone work. had commented. Yeah. It might be hard to sit for Yeah, the, uh, John and uh, Barbara checked it out. It, it's not uh, possible, but it was a good suggestion. Yeah, thanks. Let's grab that idea. Sometimes people are going to sit in the Yeah. Um, but we did talk about a lot of food okay. changes I, at this ice, point. I had several people asking me for iced coffee. And oh. So. Uh, we usually do that in the summer yeah, anyway. Okay. Um, I guess mm -hmm. summer's here based mm -hmm. on this week. So we'll see. I, I can I get on that. Is there a bucket of ice for in the freezer when they have it there? Maybe. There's a bucket of ice in the yeah. freezer. Yeah. Ice cubes. Okay. Any uh, questions on the food committee? I, I want to congratulate um, Bob because um, he, through his persistence, tea is now down to 50 cents. You know, because coffee, <laughs> coffee, oh, oh, was it coffee made it down to 50, so um, the, tea. the tea advocates tea. wanted the tea. And he yeah. also, um, we've also changed it so there's it's not 52 cents, 54 cents, it's 50 cents. It's 47 cents plus tax, yeah. which comes out to 50 cents even. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So we're losing a little profit, but we're gaining the, the support of Linda and, and most of the volunteers. Unfortunately, we're trying to find those four cents. Baker because he's losing a penny on every cup of yeah. tea and a penny on every cup of coffee because he's only getting three cents. Well, why are we on not for profit? So. Yeah, so the governor may be unhappy about that. But we won't know the difference. Let's <laughs> hope <laughs> not. Not from us, anyway. Um, okay. Don't call him and tell him. Next space, um, space, uh, the, our next frontier. Actually, um, we're. I, thank you, Jim. I thought, I thought that was kind of funny. Anyway, um, we're we're. Uh, there's not. We're going slowly. You'll notice more meetings happening in the library. I think the biggest thing that's going to affect our space is um, the extended hours because that will give us five days of having some kind of happening from four to five which hadn't been a possibility before. So um, anyway, so, but we are working, um, we're doing all the things that were, uh, we, the space committee decided, it's, the timing is a, of an issue. Um, one thing we will be doing is probably having a Saturday where we're coming in to clean out the cellars so that we can make our, uh, like our conference room more usable. You know, there's a lot of, there's a clutter, a lot of clutter around, um, and we want to remove that so that will open up more space for us eventually too. Anything else on this space? Uh, Jim, maybe uh, you could say something about your uh, furniture proposal. Oh, it's yeah. in the mill. I've applied for it, and we're trying to get it okay. For what? This is a grant to get uh, some new furniture, change say, these tables to smaller tables so we can utilize the space better, okay. possibly. These two, sorry to interrupt. I have, I'm gonna be at an appointment, but um, Bernie is here, he's one of the drivers, so when you want him to bring the van around, he can do that for you. Yeah, he's at the end four. of the meeting, I'll get to see the van and meet one of our great new drivers. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so Thanks. if you just ask for him at the desk, or he's in um, the transportation office. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't, I don't have a total figure yet because I just put on, the, I got the stuff from Heather and wrote a little thing up and took the little thing that I wrote out to them and they'll write up something and we'll discuss it and get a vote on it. And this is from the Elks organization. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's a significant amount of cash. So this will go into the space business because it will reorganize yep. some of these rooms instead of these huge big tables. Mm -hmm. Smaller tables, we can still put them all together like this for a big meeting, okay. but you can also use them, use them mm -hmm. for smaller meetings. It will utilize the space better. Yes. Anything else on the space? Okay. Oh, but, uh, you missed it somebody. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm not sure about when you're going to extend the hours and the time, you know, Saturday. That's coming up right okay. now. Okay. We'll talk about the extended hours right now. Sure. Next question. I think it, whatever that Monday, the first Monday in June, I mean, yeah, June 5th, I believe it is. Yep. And that, mm -hmm. yeah, that's when we'll be extending hours. They'll be eight to five. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we hope that there will be, you know, there, this is just the beginning to um, meet the needs of everybody. Um, you know, people have asked us about Saturday hours. They've asked us for night hours. So, but this is just the beginning. That's all I can say at this point. But I think people are suggesting, they're, they're actually saying that they're very happy about this. Yeah. Well, you did see, uh, Jim, in that survey that you did several years ago, there was more interest in uh, weekend hours than long extended hours yeah. in the evening. I think five or six is fine, but. Beyond that, there was as much interest as more nope. interest in Saturday. Yeah, more interest. Yeah. I think it was, if I remember correctly, about 83% went on Saturday, even if it was only half a day. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. It was years and hours that were good, but if we're limited. But yeah. I think pushing toward the Saturday. Mm -hmm. Well, I know. I know for a fact, with an expended Monday, there will be at least 15 more in the writing group. In the afternoon, which makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also, I think it goes along with our um, with sort of like the whole issue of people needing to work and having to work their work daytime hours. Then, mm -hmm. I mean, I have some friends who you know, are older than myself and they have to work, but they'd like to come and partake in right. the gym and things, and they can't because they're working. Yeah. The biggest thing that, that people that wanted the afternoon hours were the people that had to go to physical therapy and stuff. 
in the morning and mm -hmm. couldn't get their wheelchairs out and ready to go till later in the afternoon. That's good point. Yeah. That, was, that, was, that was a big issue for my folks. Okay, moving on to Elder Vision. I'm going to let you take that. <laughs> what am I taking? Any Elder Vision, um, we're just meeting after this meeting and... Um, yeah, you know, well, we're, uh, uh, due to uh, Mike Ahern has, uh, as you know, has resigned from Elder Vision also. And uh, we have another letter that Jim wrote for him for L Division to sign. And uh, we have three new members, Jim Spencer and uh, Diane Young and Karen Fuchsia. 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 Oh, Fuchsia. 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 Glippy? Yeah. Glippy resigned. Yeah. I know, Glippy didn't resign. Oh. No, oh. Glippy still, still is. Still. Still. Yeah. 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 Debbie Dumphy resigned. Yeah. And another lady. Arlene. Arlene. Yeah. Arlene. Yeah. Arlene. Yeah. And she was, they both resigned. So uh, I have taken over from Debbie the treasurership is in, uh, as I'm a president and treasurer now. I went down to the bank and yeah. signed the yeah. check and everything. Until we can get someone, I knew people weren't willing to become treasurers. We didn't, we didn't pick the right people. Uh, so we were still looking for someone to uh, act as treasurer. It isn't difficult, it's just a little bit of, you know, kind of some details. So I'm doing that right now. Other than that, uh, we've got some money. We can get requests from, we're going to pay for the uh, volunteer luncheon. I'm sure we're going to vote on that today, but I'm mm -hmm. sure we won't have any problem with that. And we pay for it every year. The other division has always paid for the volunteer luncheon. I change. Because uh, the city won't. They can't come up with the money from the city. Okay. Yeah, it's so. Uh, I guess you could have went for the city council and paid for about two months. You could probably get it. But uh, the, the reason for elder division in the first place is to get money. We get we get some money. I was surprised. There's America's Charities, which is the Go Fund, is it? Yep. Go fund on on computer. People go in there and we're listed, and we get checks from 112 to 75 to 150 dollars about every two three months. Just send us the checks of people who have checked them off, mm -hmm. and we get personal donations. So we've got some money income coming in. I think we're going to look at some grants we could possibly write. And as a 501c3, mm -hmm. we can accept grants. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that would do some good also. I think we really need to advertise that GoFund. There are so many people. They're shutting it down. They're shutting it down. Yeah. A lot of scammers in there. Yeah. So it, these things are coming in. And so Elder Division has some money in it. And uh, is this GoFundMe or GoFund? Are they GoFund. 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 GoFundMe is different. Yeah. Okay. It's run by America's Charities. Yep. That's called the yep. I didn't know what it was. Just America's Charities. I got a check. Do they take oh. money out like on Valley Gives to in terms of their maintenance? Yes, they take some. Uh, I, they think I think they take 5%. Yeah, you can go into their website. Uh, Linda did try. <laughs> and they gave us a code and everything. How to get into the work. I don't know why. But they, you can look at the balance and see what they actually collect and what they charge you for. Well, so that's money coming in. We have people writing us checks to Elder Division still as donations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so things are doing pretty well. We have money enough to, to do some things we need. And we've got some money in there from the tires campaign uh, left over that we can also use for funding uh, if we need more. Although the mayor has been very generous with the extra 30000 Is there any um, issue with, um, because I know in the Arts Council we have a also a 501c3 and 8, a different part of it, but there were some issues around if you're sep how separate having the executive director or our director going out fundraising for the Inc. Is there any, any questions about that? I don't think so. I don't okay. know of any. All right, because I know that they are scrutinizing things. In terms yeah. of we haven't done any active fundraising, really. It's okay. just... Um, so far as this yeah, Okay, yeah. just just in case, because I know they're, they're the, the city solicitors are, are very oh, it's cautious. Okay, mm -hmm. you might want to check the city hall yeah, about that. Yes. That. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's about all for El Division. Ribbon cutting celebration for New Bay. Come up with the name yet? 
Dan. <laughs> no, I'm not that creative. Um, senior servant. Oh, that's cute. Heather, senior what? servant. Sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry. Cute though. Well, the Our senior servant. Yeah. Ladies. The van celebration will be Monday, May eighth, at one p.m. If anyone is available a little bit before that, maybe around noon time, we could use some help because we're going to do some refreshments and that kind of thing. So if there's a couple of board members, I'd like a little bit of help. Um, so anyone who oh. donated to the van, thank you, Barbara, um, was sent a personal invitation um, to come to the event. It will also be in the newspaper. It's open to anyone, so anyone can come and be a part of the celebration. But there was a special invite to donors. Was, was that, excuse me, did that include donors who, I mean, if Valley Gives a few years ago? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, between Barbara Kaczynski and Linda, there's a spreadsheet, and they kept a meticulous track of who donated specifically to that campaign. So everyone should have an invitation if they join right. into that. Um, Victoria is picking them up okay. today. Okay. So they'll get mailed out. You should. They'll hit probably next week. Oh. So this is also open to the public. Yes. And you'll get special invitations to those people. Yep. And it's good for the public to know about it too. Yeah. So there's going to be a press release. Yeah. 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 Ye
And both fans are only within Northampton still, right. or are yes, we sir. going anywhere else? We will be going, uh, and there will be a, a additional charge when it goes mm -hmm. outside of Northampton. Mm -hmm. Like for medical clearances? Yeah. Or yeah. Oh, so, oh, and also, so, like, yeah. if you're going on, you know, if you were going to take the van on Saturday to go to somewhere, like a cultural event oh. somewhere, mm -hmm. there'll be more, uh, they, they, we will organize a, a cost that's f affordable, but mm -hmm. it will cost, it will right. cover the cost of yeah. the van. Yeah, we took uh, trips to uh, William, William, uh, Williamstown yeah. Museum, mm -hmm. Hartford, Worcester. Can we come? Yeah. Can you sign up? Okay. Yeah. What's the capacity yeah. of the new one? What is it? Eight and eight? I think it's is the new one the same as the old one? Like twelve or well, you know what? We're going out yeah. there yeah. in a few minutes, so you'll yeah. see. We'll come. I mean, the, 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 the new one is more. No, no, no. The new one is the same. The new one is the same. The new one is the same. And we're going to visit the Patriots, what you call it. We're going to have lunch. There's no date yet whether it's going to be because I do medical transportation. I took somebody to Holyoke today. I couldn't tell him that he could take the van to Holyoke. But is there a, a projected date when people are going to be able to take it to go outside? Michelle told me today they're going to make up a new brochure to, uh, and flyer to put out in various places that is going to have the van availabilities and medical transportation on both open. So we'll still be doing your type of medical transportation. Probably not as much in the van, but we can do some. It is hard to take to keep the van, uh, you know, to keep it. Um, to bring it down just to Boston or you know, Springfield, even Springfield for the day and sitting there. So I think medical transportation is going to still be a very valuable service for us. Could you stay with them in the van? Could you? It's just a big change. Of, it's a different price. Like it was yeah. 12 bucks round trip to take him to the yeah. So two bucks or yeah. Five bucks is different. Yeah. So that's yeah. all I want to know. I yeah. think we'll, we'll, we'll be re looking at to you know to see if we can subsidize that's a little bit of the idea. cost of that too. Yeah. So it does. Well, the board is minus yeah. 24 steps. Okay. Uh, LGBT dance. Yeah. And then someday. You, what, I can't remember the date. Do you have the date in front of you? It's just the day. Um, it's on a Friday night. Um, our uh, gay men's group asked if they we could do we could they could use our facility for it, and we're supporting it. And it sounds like a great. It's the day before the the big parade. So, oh, so come and visit and party on the sixth. Would be Friday. Would be the fifth. So should we write it into this? Is that May the fifth? No, it's not sponsored. Oh, oh, there's usually another. Oh, is that the prize? Okay. Of the winter? Yeah. It's donation. Yeah. It's not. It's not being funded by, um, by the council. Yeah. Um, oh, so that's what it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Keep, keep going quickly because we have a, a, our other meeting. But um, Northampton Neighbors is based on the village that's all over the United States, and you know, and basically it started in Beacon Hill, and um, they usually, and it has a membership fee, and in some cases that membership fee is pretty expensive. So what we were doing is <coughs> is trying to. Um, we, we've invited Northampton neighbors to um, be under our umbrella as they develop, <coughs> and so that means that there'll be, um, there's about, <coughs> excuse me, about 50 to 100 volunteers that are willing and able to provide support for people living alone in their homes. And we'll, we'll be putting it together um, ward-based, <coughs> so you know that, so there'll be a committee to support the oh thank you <coughs> thank you um, to to support some of the more um, those individuals that really are pretty well homebound and so we'll have and it will have listservs so that um, uh, you know so say Mrs Smith needs her shovel her snow shoveled. Um, then we'll have a system in place where a neighbor will be able to do that for Mrs. Smith. Um, if she needs 
or he needs, um, uh, you know, maybe friendly visiting, just something. So to, to hopefully to reduce the, the isolation, yeah. um, and then even having um, having some social events in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. like using Lily Library, using Forbes Library, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I anyway. just wanted to add that this goes along with a, um, a big national concern the American Geriatric Society has. Actually, they, they um, uh, published a uh, unfriended adults, um, a big policy paper, a position paper on it because it really is a concern because of around making decisions around um, end of life, right. things like that. People don't have anybody in their life. Right. And that's going to be difficult. Although, this is, and that's what try, yeah. we're trying to do is so that everyone will have they'll have supported people within their neighborhoods and again it's it'll be under our umbrella um and um it, but as soon as they get the funding they need to be autonomous they will be all most of the villages in the united states are by themselves but we will always be working with them we met with highland valley um and highland valley will be working with them the visiting nurses we'll we will but they'll be focused in on the neighborhoods while we're focused in are more on the community so if, I think it, it will be, it'll add to that age-friendly commitment. Right. Um, just back on the van again, um, please. Um, the van will be available to the tra uh, travel group here, too, correct? For yeah. things of that yep. nature? Yep. So no, it will have to be yeah. coordinated somehow that somebody doesn't think that the van is available and then find out that no travel is using it. Right. Yep. And vice versa. Probably okay. co uh, coordinate that through Jen, I would imagine. Yep. Right? And we're, we're, yeah, yeah, definitely. And we're working on getting one more more driver, so we'll have four. And hopefully, what I would love to do, because we had a little bit of conflict because the, a couple of drivers weren't available when the travel club wanted to use it. I'm not sure if it was a travel oh. mm -hmm. club. But um, um, so we, I would love to have a few substitute drivers um, for the weekends. Um, I've already so, volunteered to be a substitute volunteer. There you go. Okay. I haven't been trained yet, but uh, yeah. okay. One last announcement before we leave. We have a get to another meeting at three o'clock. Some of us. The annual meeting uh, is takes place in June, and that time we elect new officers, or we elect our officers. In May, our next meeting. We will be have a nominating committee, and uh, will be appointed in May. And anyone wishing to nominate someone for an office or nominate themselves, if you want to nominate somebody, please talk to them first. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's nice, and or you can nominate yourself if you're interested in, in a position. And we will be electing uh, officers, uh, chairman, vice chairman, secretary, treasurer, in June. Is that for the council? Or no, this this, 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 this board. board. This board. This board. Okay. Yeah, every, we have every year. Our annual meeting Thank is you. June, and in May we take nominations for. Well, the health fair is the is May, the same day. Oh, it's, it's the right. same day. I changed yes, down on the 18th. Yeah, yeah, we're going to so change. Go, we're going to the 18th. Yes. yes. I did not that's, know that. That's May 18th. I think it's yeah. April, yeah. April 18th on the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you need no. Oh, okay. Am I correct? Yeah. No, oh, you're, you're great, John. That was Linda's mistake again. Just, all right. Okay, somebody has to find all these mistakes. <laughs> it's May 18th. May 18th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. May 18th. That's the board meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're going to be nominated. Yeah, that's the one. Got it. And matter of fact, it's down here in the bottom of your uh, agenda today. It says Thursday, April 18th. Yeah. yeah, but it's actually May. 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 Yeah. So, well, you, it's too good. Yeah. We're not going to have another meeting in a couple of days. So, uh, that being said, uh, all of you who uh, want to open. Uh, I'm sorry, but I have something I want to bring up. Okay. Um, I think that there's so much traffic on Con Street, uh, and that crossing Con Street is really mm -hmm. complicated sometimes, particularly at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But I think we should raise the question of couldn't we use a <coughs> traffic light or stop sign or something that would uh, uh, That gets to go to the city, and I don't know. I know Patty trying to get that. That has been brought up <laughs> probably <laughs> three or four times oh, yeah. in the last two years. And the traffic light. And the traffic light, the traffic light thing was like such a hassle. Yeah. And the city you didn't even down here with all the sound. We have to press the little flashlights for you to walk across, but it's down and back again. It's a bit of a walk. But, but I would, that. I would, I would think there's a possibility on things we have big, like the health and safety fair. Maybe the city could throw a cop out there for us. Yeah. 
That would be nice. So we'll do dirt traffic, yeah. But uh, uh, during the construction of the yeah. on street, we looked into it specifically for yep. that. Yep. Ah. Signs, we wanted stop signs there. Mm. We wanted lights and no, 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 to dispose of it properly. The board list. I don't really want my address being shared with other people. You guys, it's not by my house. No, no, no. I meant the budget. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, but the board list too. Would be yeah, it's what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I have a pizza place. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, I think we've um, oh, just about run out of time. I make the motion. We close the meeting. I second it.